friends welcome back to my channel my name is august and this is another weekly reading vlog i'm in the middle of cooking some jackfruit sandwiches for dinner and i'm really excited my sister is coming over to work on a project i thought i'd give her some food <laughs> some cooking and i finished a really wonderful book this morning so i thought i'd start this weekly reading vlog with a brand new book that i just picked up haven't started yet and that is Woman in the Dark by Dashiell, Dashiell Hammett. This was published in 1933 and it's like a murder mystery, almost like a film noir kind of vibe. I don't really know what I'm getting into with this, but I just checked. This thing is only 75 pages long. I'll tell you all about that once I finish, but that means it's pretty quick. So there's gonna be another book picking for this vlog and I'm really excited. It's currently Saturday around dinner time. So I'm gonna go ahead. Oh my gosh, I just saw the back of this for the first time. Look at this guy. You're so stylish. Um, so that is what I'm currently doing. I hope wherever you are, you're doing really, really well. Thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate it. Now let's get to some cooking. Okay, so it took me about like an hour total to finish this book, uh, which isn't bad, but that ending was really weird. <laughs> so this was originally published, like I mentioned, in 1933, and it was actually published in three installments um, in like a literary magazine, I believe. And it kind of felt like it could have been better if there was like a final installment, but it ended in like just such a weird way of like, everyone laughing and kumbaya like the end of a scooby-doo episode um i think it was really interesting it was really fast-paced it was really fun um we're basically f opening up with this young woman who is stumbling down the road obviously she's in need of help she's not doing well she's frantic she's panicking and so she knocks on this person's door and she enters and it's this young man named brazil and Basically from there stuff happens and I really liked that beginning because it was so intense. It was really like action-packed um, And it all took place in one room and it felt like a play where people were just like entering 
the scene and then leaving and entering and I really liked that but then once it got a little bit more involved with like fist fights and gun fights and police and kind of like a crack house like I kind of just lost interest it went really fast it was super easy to read um but it's not very memorable um in the beginning though it does mention that it's kind of similar to like the writings and the styles of like the Maltese Falcon which I have not read but I'd be really interested in reading it because I've heard really really wonderful things about it but I'm glad I read this um it definitely had a very 1920s 30s feel of like those old yeah eh? it was definitely that vibe um that's about it but um since I finished that I'm going to go ahead and get into some comfy clothes and then I'm going to pick my next book. Let's go pick out a new book. And I'll probably just start that very soon here too. I don't really have anything else going on, so yay. Well, shit friends. <sighs> Not feeling super inspired to read any of the books on my shelves. <sighs> and I'm so mad because I got two contemporaries yesterday at Dollar Tree, so they're only a dollar each, and I can't read either of them because they're both part of series, and it did not make that clear on their covers. Like, I'm never going to do that again where I just hop in the middle of a series. Like, I'm looking at my shelves and I'm like, there's a reason why these books are here, and it's because I don't want to read. <laughs> I don't want to read them, and the ones that I do want to read, I've been saving for my birthday month, which is so weird, but it's a thing I do, so... I don't know. Maybe I need to do a video where I read the books that have been on here for the longest because yikes. Well, I just solved my own problem because my sister's here and she's gonna pick a book for me. You're ruining your video. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm gonna ruin your video. Sing it, girl. I'm gonna ruin your video. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, I pick All right. You can pick any book from this shelf. Mm or then bottom from this All corner right, to there. Oh. Oh. Very anticlimactic. I told you I was going to ruin your video. No! I did just that. <laughs> <laughs> Death How Wave can I not by pick Ben this? Bova. Look I know, isn't color. it beautiful? That's why I picked like it up. Plum. That's what we got. It's helpful because I didn't know what to read next, so <laughs> high five. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of my house. <laughs> Well, the book that my sister picked, I also got at Dollar Tree a year or so ago and did not realize it was yet again the second in a series that I have not read from. And I, it never says it on the cover that they're part of a series. And I'm so mad about it. So I'm just going to set it aside. Apparently it is number two in a series called the Star Quest Trilogy, which sounds super dope, but I don't have the copies of. And I'm so mad. Why do I keep doing this? I am so indecisive about what book I want to read, and I need to be kind of forced to read a book. So I've asked my off-screen partner here to pick a book for me. I'm going to ask him a random question, and from my shelves, I will then pick a book. So we're just going to try this all again. <laughs> Okay, just did a quick count. I have a total of 49 books on these shelves. Alec, can you please pick a number for me between 1 and 49? 16. That's my lucky That's number! Oh gosh, don't disappoint me! Birthday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 16! Okay! Alright, we're gonna read the Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Right, Omi? Yeah. If I remember correctly, this is a YA fantasy? Magical realism, perchance? Kind of based on fairy tales and folklore. I found this copy while I was thrifting at my local secondhand shop down the street. Oh my gosh, you are so cute!
So it's been a while since I've updated you all, but it's about like 6 p.m. on Monday now, and I wanted to share some updates of what I'm reading, how things are going, all that fun stuff. You just saw a little montage of some last minute thrifting decisions. I ended up having a really lovely lunch with a friend that I haven't seen in a really, really long time, and it was so nice, and then we ended up kind of being close to a goodwill, so I skirted into that parking lot. I found some books while I was there that for the first time in a while like of thrifting I feel genuinely excited to read. Like sometimes I go thrifting and I'm like oh this is a great addition to a collection that I'll read you know anywhere between like a year or five years from now. Does that make sense? Like I feel like lately I've just been picking up books that I feel like my future self would enjoy rather than like what I would enjoy now. I ended up finding one classic two memoirs that I had never heard of before but I'm really excited about them and then one contemporary literary fiction short story collection so I'm really excited about that one. I wanted to tell you about The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I am now on chapter 13 page 122. This is so easy to read. It is so fast-paced. It's really fun. Um, I mean if I really just sat down and turned off all distractions and just really focus on this book, I could get a lot of it read. And that's what I'm planning on doing tonight. <laughs> so I am about, I'm here right now. The Hazelwood follows this 17 year old girl named Alice who has always kind of grown up moving around with her mom. So it's just the two of them and they move around a lot because they're followed by bad luck. So Alice has never met her grandmother, which is her mom's mom but she was quite the famous author back in the day and um, her book is now extremely rare. It's this collection of fairy tales um, called The Hinterland and one day Alice wakes up and her mom and her stepfather and her stepsister have all gone missing and she is just being followed by creepy people. There are weird notes left for her that are all from this fairy tale book that she's never read from. She's never met her grandmother and her grandmother recently passed away and like I don't know it just kind of follows this story down a rabbit hole of all these creepy people and these fairy tales and um, sh there's like a kind of love interest in here as well so he's helping Alice figure out what's happened to her family and that's about as far as I've gotten is like her family or her mom really has disappeared and she's trying to figure out where her mom is. It's alluding to the fact that the people in this fairy tale folklore storybook are real and they have kidnapped Alice's mom. It reads like YA because it's really fast paced and really easy to get into and very engaging and just a lot of fun. I have absolutely no idea where it's going or what's going to happen if it's going to become a little bit more like fantasy, if it's going to be like a realm or a portal kind of fantasy. We shall see but that's what I am currently reading. I'm really enjoying and yeah. It's been a great day so far. Okay, I am back home. It is about 6 p.m. now. I was able to snag an appointment with my pedicurist. <laughs> I haven't been in over two months uh, because of, you know, COVID and stuff. I realized I was about to pack up the Hazelwood before I left. And then I realized I was like, am I going to finish this by the time my pedicure is done? Because, you know, pedicure takes a good, like, anywhere from an hour to two hours. But I only have this much left. 
So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to bring a different book instead. I'll just try and figure out what I want to read next. So I did end up picking up Sputnik Sweetheart by Haruki Murakami. I was going to wait until April to read this because I just came out with my April TBR video. I realized like I didn't really know what else to start. Um, there are quite a few new books that I really want to read, but I was like, you know what? I'm kind of feeling this right now. Let's just jump right in. Oh my god, I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. I was completely wrong in my April TBR video what the plot was. I butchered it because I was reading the back and did not really know at all what I was getting into. And I'm really glad I didn't because this actually follows this woman named Samir who is trying to be a novelist. She's trying to be a writer um, and she's two years after dropping out of college so she's you know probably early 20s and she falls in love with a woman who is 17 years older than her but the book is written from this outsider's perspective who we haven't quite figured out their name yet but I'm assuming it's a male um and he's like narrating what's happening between Samir and this woman that she's fallen in love with um but he himself was in love and has been in love with Samir um, so I really like this kind of outside narration of like a real person who interacts with the character, Samir, but he's not directly involved with what's happening so far. I really like that. It's kind of like how The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides was narrated. I really liked that narration style where it's like you can never fully understand what that person's going through, but it's just kind of like a witness account. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying this. I'm having so much fun, but I still have to finish reading The Hazelwood. So I just got home. I am going to go ahead and ah, do my workout for the day. I have been pushing it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off for way too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then this evening, I'm going to finish reading The Hazelwood and then hopefully tonight or tomorrow morning, I can give you all a synopsis of um, what I thought of this book. But I'm really liking it. It's really trippy. Some crazy things have happened. That's where I'm currently at. I think I do only have like 20 pages to go here. Oh my gosh, less than. Less than 20 pages. Why couldn't I finish this before I left? It's fine. It's fine. Everything turned out just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then jump into this later tonight. Good books, my friend. Such good books. <laughs> Love that. It looks like I have a bubbling cauldron over here, but it's just my humidifier. But good morning, friends. Um, I'm having a bad coffee day. Does anyone ever have it where like you make your coffee the same as you do every morning, but one morning it just tastes so bad, like it's so wrong. Anyway, it is quite early in the a.m. right now. It's about 6.30. I've been up for a while. Um, and I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you. I don't know what happened last night, but I went to bed with 93 subscribers. And I woke up this morning with 112 that's crazy. I started this little channel in February. I thought about doing a booktube channel for a long time and I just never had the guts to do it. I thought it would 
take up too much time. I thought nobody would watch it. I thought it would just be like speaking into the void. So I just thought like, what's the point? So reaching a hundred, over a hundred subscribers, like not just like, oh, here's a hundred. Like you guys surpassed that. You all surpassed a hundred um, is really mind blowing to me because I never really thought about what would happen. So thank you so much for being here and supporting this channel and all of your nice comments and just being a part of what's going on here. I just, I so appreciate you all. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like, it's bitter, like bitter coffee. Anyway, I'm yapping for too long. It is time for me to close out this vlog, but first I did finish reading The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert last night. Um, not gonna lie, I was definitely weaving in and out of sleep as I read the last few pages, especially. I did not like the ending. It was very not memorable. I really didn't care at the very end because I was like, oh, okay. Like, it just didn't wow me. It didn't make me emotional. It didn't do anything for me. Um, but throughout, I thought it was really fun. I thought it was really fast paced. I thought it was really easy to read. I thought it was um, fun to get engrossed in. I really did like it. I feel like this is one that, you know, years from now, I actually would really enjoy rereading because it was a lot of fun. And I loved how, do I want to use the word meta? It's kind of like Inception-y, kind of like um, the Starless Sea kind of vibes where it feels like Inception, where it's like stories within stories within stories within story, like that kind of thing. And you're like, whoa what's going on but then there's also like a crazy haunted house that just felt really psychedelic and trippy and like dreamlike and weird and i loved that element um to be honest though it made me want to reread the starless sea and i already gave away my copy because i needed it so much <laughs> but i was like oh maybe i should give it another chance so i don't know this brought up a bunch of weird feelings for me i can't get over like the physical shape and the floppy paperbackness and the art of it Overall on Goodreads, I just gave it three stars because I liked where it was headed, didn't like where it ended, felt like I, I mean, I finished this yesterday and I already can't remember a lot about it and I don't really think that's a good sign. I do recommend it though. I think it was a really good YA experience. I would definitely say it's an older YA though. The main character is 17 years old, so I would definitely say this would be best for like 15 to you know, 17 years old, but I still had fun reading it. I still had a lot of fun reading it, and I'm gonna be, ew, turning 26 in a few weeks. Ugh. So there's that one. And then I did pass out as soon as I finished that book, so I didn't get any further into Sputnik Sweetheart, but I was able to put my little bookmark in here. So it is really early in the morning. My body's still in sleep mode. My mind is completely awake. You know what I mean? That feeling. So I think I'm going to sit here, drink my shitty coffee, and read a little bit more of Sputnik Sweetheart here, which I am absolutely loving. I cannot express how much I'm loving this. Again, thank you all so incredibly much for being here. I honestly can't believe it. Over 100 subscribers. That is wild to me. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you all being here. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're doing really well. And if not, I'm sending lots of warm and lovely thoughts your way. Thank you again so much for being here and I will see you all next week. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.